I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot cylinder misfire codes on Saturn View 2007, but the same principles apply for any vehicle. So a quick rundown, this is a V6, so it has six cylinders. This is 302, so this is saying there's a problem with the second cylinder. You might also, if you press an uh, arrow across, this has thrown two arrows, but it's the same code. Sometimes it might say PO300, which is just a general misfire code. We can sort of disregard that if it's mentioning a, a in particular cylinder here. On here it's cylinder number two. So we need to determine the firing order of the cylinders on the year, make and model of your car. This is a Saturn View 2007, it's a 3.5 litre, and the firing order is uh, as such. Next to the firewall, which is the back here, we have cylinder 1, 3 and 5, and at the front 2, 4 and 6. We have a problem, um, the error code is P0302, which is the second cylinder, so that's this one right here. Good news for us, because it's a lot easier to get to, it's right there. Some of the back ones you have to sort of take off this ductwork and dive in, so it's a bit more awkward. So, um, slightly good news there, silver lining. Uh, so we're going to look at this cylinder right here. So the purpose of this video is to find a diagnosis, that's part of the problem. Actually replacing the component, relatively easy, but a cylinder misfire code could be many different things. But in this video we're going to look at the two most common things and see if we can sort of move those around uh, to try and find a diagnosis. What we're going to do, we have an error on cylinder number two here. We're just going to switch a couple components with cylinder number six right here. I choose six because it's easier to access to. So it's, you know, you could switch it with any one you want to. Then if our code jumps from um, two to six, so instead of 0302, we disconnect the battery, reset the code, go for a drive. If the error is now 0306 and we've switched over the plug and the coil to six, we know that the problem is the plug or the coil and then we can just move the coil over back if that is the case and see if it's the plug or the coil from those two things so that's the purpose of this video we're trying to make the error code jump to work out if it's a plug or a coil later in the video i'll explain some other things that it could be if these don't help you so what we're going to do is locate the cylinder here this is the coil for the spark plug right here you undo it with the symbol allen socket a size six you can use an allen key or a socket I'm just going to put it in here and undo it and take it out. Uh, once the bolt's loosened, you can just grab this coil and pull it out. Disconnect the harness right here first, using this toggle right here. And before you me uh, mess with any electronics, disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. So now we're disconnected on the battery there, we're free to mess around with the electronics here. So we're just gonna squeeze the tab and pull out that towards the coil. That should disconnect the coil from the uh, system there. One thing about disconnecting the terminal here, all our error codes will erase. This is good for kind of diagnosing quickly because um, when we switch things around, we want to make sure it works you know, with immediate results. Usually when you actually implement the fix and you're pretty sure it is the fix, it's good to keep the error code in the system. So when you drive normally and it does a drive cycle, the error naturally goes away. So that's a good indication that you have indeed fixed the problem. If you keep resending every time, you kind of just waiting for that error to maybe appear so it's harder to know if you fixed it or not so just a little tip there okay so we're just going to pull this coil out it pretty much just pulls right out this just sits on top of the spark plug so i've pulled the coil off here this uh, indeed could be the problem um, we're going to take the spark plug out next for the same coil so we're just going to slip a socket down here and undo the spark plug Alright, so we're going to loosen this spark plug. We'll need a few of these socket extensions. If the spot's kind of awkward like this, we've got a little um, kind of radiator fan in the way. I'm just going to start feeding these down one by one and connecting it up once we're um, sort of halfway in the hole. And that allows you to, you know, get the length in and undo it that way when there's uh, some restrictions. Alright, so we got the spark plug out. Um, the browning around here is, you know, perfectly normal. Around there. Usually an indication of a failed uh, spark plug is if they're soiled here, uh, they've got some sort of corrosion here and it can't um, make a contact with the spark there. So it's usually a sign of a bad spark plug. It's really hard to tell without testing it properly, which is why I recommend sort of uh, changing it with another one in another cylinder. Uh, this is a 5 in 8 inch socket and it helps if it has the rubber bit uh, inside there 
and the rubber bit will actually grab the top of the spark plug and allow you to pull it out. So that's enough about that. What we're going to do now is just switch this spark plug around with a, another spark plug from another cylinder. But again, if you see something glaringly obviously wrong with your spark plug, then you've probably found the culprit and there's no need to do a switch with another cylinder because it looks like you might have found your problem. But if it's kind of inconclusive like this, then we'll sort of proceed. So now we've removed everything out of cylinder 2, the coil and the plug, we're going to find the most easiest accessible one, it looks like number uh, 6 here. So we're just going to again take the allen wrench out, take the coil off, take the plug out, and then we're going to switch the plug and the coil with uh, cylinder number 2 there. So now we've taken the known good plug out of cylinder 6, we're going to pop it straight into number 2. That way we don't mix up our plugs and coils and things, we're going straight in. So from 6 right into 2. If your plugs are really hard to remove, just put a tiniest bit of anti-seize on the threads. Now we don't want this to interfere with the spark or anything, but it just allows us to get them out later if we need to further diagnose this problem. So while we have everything off, I'll talk about some of the things that can contribute to a cylinder misfire error. Now. Uh, the main one is really the spark plugs, uh, they might be corroded, it might be worn out, that's sort of number one. Number two is the coil right here that sits on top of the spark plug and it's not, in a, uh, not allowing the spark plug to spark or doing its job so it's not getting the, the power it needs to generate the spark. Uh, number three on a fuel injection uh, car, um, you have the uh, fuel spraying onto the spark and that ignites and that actually drives the engine so you could have a dead fuel injector a good thing uh, uh, to do with those is take the fuel injector out and just put it on a multimeter and measure the resistance and see if it falls within a set range really easy to do uh, the thing you don't really do that first is because you have to dig a bit deeper take off a lot of these components to actually find the injector depending on the car uh, it could be clogged, it could be not working, any of those reasons. And another one, um, actually more common than the fuel injector, is you have a, a leak. It could be a vacuum leak uh, of some sort. So what you do here, you um, you take the spark plug out, you thread in uh, a gauge, just like a pressure gauge, into the spark plug well there. Start the car and see if um, it holds pressure. If you're losing pressure, then you know you have a leak in there. So. That's some of the common symptoms, but with this method, by just switching the plug and the coil, we can instantly determine if they're the most two common things right away. If the error comes back, we're going to go to the uh, leak down test and perform a compression test on that. That would be the next step. If that checks out, you have good compression, then we're going to be looking at the fuel, so it could be a fuel injector issue. So they're the most common things that can go wrong, but the easiest ones to do is to switch the coil and switch the plug and determine if that is the problem and again if you inspect the plug and it looks off you look at the coil and something is really really wrong with that then you know you might have found the culprit without doing anything further so, so um, we're going to put our spark plugs back in now when you do this find a socket without the rubber thing in now because what tends to happen is when you tighten it up and pull out your extension this kind of stays with this because it has the rubber piece inside and you're pulling this out of the car and this lives where the coil needs to go so it's a good idea when you put them back in make sure it has a nice loose fit and it can come out really easy so putting this plugs in find the threads with your fingers and rotate by hand so it's nicely threaded in and then you can finish it off with the wrench don't over tighten it because the last thing you want is a stuck spark plug in there that you know insane to get back out Okay, so everything's back together now. We're going to reconnect the battery and then go for a drive. We can see if we can get that uh, misfire to reappear. If it reappears, unfortunately it's not the plug and not the coil, but at least you've saved a lot of money trying to replace the plugs and coils. Um, you know, and we can start looking elsewhere. Again, other than the injectors and um, a potential vacuum leak, um, it could be wiring even, wiring going to the coil itself, so it really does depend. But if you're really sort of hopeless on troubleshooting it any further, then at least you've done the cheap part yourself. You can go to a mechanic and say, oh, you know, look, look I uh, switched the coil and the plug. It's none of those things. Can you just find out what the problem is? So at least you've tried to save yourself money. And again, you might catch the error and it might not be a problem. So let's take it for a drive and see if we can, uh, uh, yeah, work out um, if that was the problem. 
So I hope the video helped you. Uh, good luck with your misfire.